Right, hey guys, how are we doing? Back another video from Annie News, continuing with the cut content for season two of Mashoko Tensei. Uh, this is covering last week's episode, not this week's episode. This week's episode was something else, though, wasn't it? But uh, yes, this was about the sister, the shut in, him seeing how he was in his past life, not wanting to let that happen. Just trying to be a good brother, Rudy. I do, I feel like he tries a lot and he gets a lot of. You know, she just got to give him a chance. Got to give him a chance. So let's see what was different, what was changed, what was potentially added in this in, in last week's episode. Norn and her isolation may have been the focus of this episode, but it's Rudy's trauma that's the overarching theme here. Mm. Just like how it was with Nanahoshi's breakdown, Norn shutting herself in forced Rudy to face his inner demons, and the traumatic response it caused allowed him to finally overcome them. He was able to reflect on why things happened the way they did on Earth, and see from a different perspective the way it had affected him. This in turn helped him to find the best solution for these two, and in a way, them breaking through also allowed him to break through. Whatever lingering regrets and remorse Rudy had from his shut-in days were now gone as indicated in the final lines of the episode. Which is really cool, I like it. Character development, ah! Uh... This was the recurring theme for the majority of Season 2, and now that his character is less hindered by his past, it serves as the perfect moment to transition into a turning point. Before we can get to that though, there was quite a bit- I was scared when I saw that it was called Turning Point 3. I was like, what is gonna happen? Um, but we won't talk about that episode just yet. More to Norn's story that we need to examine first. The true extent to her emotional buildup and why it is she became a shut-in herself. So, as we look at that and Rudy's self-reflection through her, We'll get to see everything we missed from what I found was the best episode of Season 2 so far. Damn. Let's get started. Episode 41, My Older Brother's Feelings. Is it episode 17 of Season 2? I think it Covering is. chapters 4 and 5 from volume 11 of the Light Novel. To Rudy, Norn's abrupt decision was quite the serious one because the day he decided to isolate himself in his past life had resulted in him becoming a shut-in for the rest of his life. Damn, so that, that decision just straight away just lasted. The wow. reason he never left his room after that was because he truly thought that everyone was out to get him. To him, the world was a dangerous place in which bullying was the only thing that awaited him. So, with bullying being the very thing that started all this, to Rudy he felt it was easiest to just avoid that misery altogether. And that wasn't the worldview that Rudy wanted Norn to be stuck with. In fact, when Rudy first heard that Norn had shut herself into her room, it had actually triggered a trauma response which took Rudy back to the very mistake that had created this worldview for him. That one instance where he stood up for himself in the cafeteria was the sole moment that to him changed his life forever. So if there was even a possibility that Norn was going through the same thing now, He's Rudy not gonna have that happen, no way. was determined to punish those responsible. God damn, he would seek God. justice until Norn felt that she was safe again. It didn't matter who he hurt in the process, since if they were terrorizing Norn, then Rudy was sure to make them regret it. Of course, Rudy's interrogation revealed the cause was him all along, mm. and it brings up this underlying issue that Norn has constantly had to deal with. You see, even before she'd enrolled into the university here, she always felt compared to Aisha. This wasn't just at school either, since at home her grandmother made sure to make those differences clear too. She made sure to let Norn know exactly how inferior she was. Oh damn, that's not so, nice. So, before Norn what could even meanie. settle down and start ex what a meanie, 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 meanie. experiencing this new chapter of her life, not one full day went by before she was being compared all over again. She was experiencing the exact same treatment she received back in Millis. The only thing that changed was the person she was being compared to. That being the case, to Norn it must have seemed that no matter where she went, she would always be forced to hear about just how unspectacular she was. Her interactions President, were a constant no. reminder that she was the least talented member of her family. Combine this with the fact that Rudy's behavior was perceptibly short of exemplary and to be inferior yeah. to someone like that, well, I'm sure it only made the comparisons feel ten times worse. Rudy wasn't going to let that stop him from trying to help though because he knew from experience the longer she stayed in there the worse it'd get for her. He knew even just a month could have serious consequences. She likely wouldn't start to regret it until at least a year or two later, but at that point the damage would be done already. Whatever feelings of remorse she'd have about wanting to do things differently wouldn't change the fact that the past however many years were wasted. 
Norn may not be able to realize it now, but it was only a matter of time before she did. And it was Rudy's job to help her realize that sooner than later. Rudy would then ask Linnea and Persena what they would do in this situation, and their response clearly showed that they were too narcissistic to even understand what Norn was going through. They did, however, know someone who was like Norn, and you'd be surprised to hear that it was actually their Aunt Ghislaine. Oh. You see, she used to go around starting fights all the time, then one day she ended up training and became a Sword King. Right. Ghislaine's case was a little bit different though, since while there was definitely a chance Norn had some latent, unexplored talent, it didn't have to be sword player magic. There were plenty of interests Norn could explain. It's funny when he says, like, I'm sh was that from Fate? Because I feel like Norn does look like a younger um, Saber from Fate. Um, yeah. Explore that neither him nor Aisha had even considered. This was a potential solution for Norn's particular case, but in the off chance she wouldn't be talented at anything, she could always do what Xanaba did and be happy simply indulging in a specific hobby. That said, Rudy did also consider that he may just be overreacting a bit. I mean, Norn was, after all, only 10 years old now. This was only her second day in her room too, so if this was just her being sulky, then to call her a shut-in would be a bit premature right now. Yeah. That didn't mean Rudy was just gonna sit back and wait either, since as her older brother, he knew he actively needed to support her. The space which he thought she may have needed before was no longer seeming like the proper solution anymore. It was possible staying hands off would turn out to be the best for her, but considering her age, Rudy felt like more attention was better. These were all the things Rudy was thinking about as he approached Norn's situation. Eventually, he'd come up with the covert operation with Linnea and Persena, and that whole part where he opens the door to himself was a fantastic creative choice unique to the anime. Oh, okay. There's a real emphasis on all the inner demons like Rudy that, has though. to fight right. against. So especially there. since the break- You see, it's cool that like not everything's just cut content, it's also additional. Down with Nanahoshi caused a similar relapse too. So, it was as Rudy walked towards Norn in her room that he would remember all the things he hated hearing. He wasn't going to pressure her or say she was causing trouble or even confront her in a way a parent should to a 10 year old. Perhaps a slap on the head may make her do what he wanted now, but as a long term solution it definitely wouldn't solve anything. Plus, with the reason for her being here falling solely upon him, Rudy knew he didn't have the right to do any of that. If anything he felt it should be him apologizing to her. Saying sorry wasn't going to change anything though, so the only action now was to hash it out together. Though he didn't know the words or exactly how to act, Rudy did his best to talk saying whatever he could to strike a chord with her. Eventually, he came to realize he just didn't understand her, and that was in part due to the distance he decided to keep from her. It was in this moment Rudy came to see that he didn't know anything about his sister. What he thought was an effort to give her space was in actuality him not even trying to get to know Norn. This made Rudy think perhaps this was actually a lost cause, but when he remembered the times his own brother came and did the same, that's when he knew that this had to be handled by him. There was no use waiting for Paul or anyone else to try and fix this, since if he left now then things may never change. As for the reason why Rudy felt that way, well, while his own brother sat in silence waiting for hours for him, he eventually left and stopped coming back. Others had come and tried to do the same, but in the end they too would be ignored and disregarded. Perhaps it was something his brother had arranged to try and help him, but Rudy's isolation made him certain that no one could understand how he felt. Well, now that he was on the receiving end of this treatment, Rudy finally had an idea of how his own older brother might have felt then. This brings us now to Norn's perspective, and though the anime portrayed most of the important stuff, there were several more layers to all the hardships she had to deal with. The first was the initial impression she got of Rudy, and despite Paul telling her how he was the one that provoked the fight, the only thing that mattered was that it seemed like Rudy was going to kill Paul here. Yeah. She understood Paul mocked his journey and made light of his survival, but the fact her first impression of Rudy was him supposedly trying to kill Paul, well- Yeah, that's gonna stay with you, isn't it? That's really such an impression. Like, yo. That was reason enough for her to hate him. So, it was that hate that constantly built a long time after, since everyone around her always felt the need to compliment Rudy. Whether it be Paul, Lilia, or his sister Aisha, the praise was inescapable and it only made Rudy even more despicable to her. Then, Aisha was a person she hated almost as much too, because at the school they used to go to in Millis, 
Aisha would always insist on competing with her. Whether it was the classroom or the gym, Aisha felt the need to challenge Norn in everything, and in everything Norn would always lose to her. Aisha would then rub it in how much better she was, and that in turn made Norn feel like she was inadequate. Every day she was made to feel like this loser, and every day the pressure to become better was increased by her very own grandmother. Since Zenith's mother was aware of the way things were with her and Aisha, the contempt she had for Aisha was, to say the least, palpable. From the way she called her illegitimate to the high expectations she placed on Norn, it was clear Zenith's mother wasn't the very best grandparent. Yeah, that being the case, pleasant. there were certain bars that needed to be met for the Lady of the Latria family, and to Norn that meant she needed to be competent. That's pretty difficult when the person you're competing against is Aisha, though, since for Aisha the way she dealt with her problems was by being better than Norn. You see, Damn. the reason she felt the need to always challenge her was because that was the only way she could fight back against the people who denied her what she saw as her rightful place in the world. She wanted to see how far her potential could take her, so but <laughs> Lilia and Zenith's mother refused to acknowledge that. So the only thing she could do then was take it all out on Norn. As for the high expectations placed on Norn, this resulted in forced etiquette classes and specific ceremony lessons, none of which was anything Norn was particularly good at. She would mess up repeatedly and get scolded because of it, then even insulted as apparently such behavior was a product of adventurer blood. To Norn, she knew this was an insult to both Paul and Zenith, so it wasn't long before she started hating her grandmother too. In fact, it's, it's actually the reason she was able to stick with Paul past Millis rather than stay here. If not for Rijerd showing up when he did, then Norn might have actually been able to convince Paul to let her go all the way to Megarit with him. It's lucky she didn't though, since if she did, she knew she would have made things a whole lot harder. Now, it was on their journey north that Norn would once again be faced with how inadequate she was. Aisha had somehow taken charge in a group with two adults, yet whenever Norn would try and do the same, anything she said basically got ignored. It wasn't fair that Aisha's opinions seemed to carry more weight than her own. I mean, they were both the same age after all. The only reason she was able to put up with it was because, unlike how her feelings would usually be ignored, Rijard would actually take the time and listen to her complaints. Oh my god, Molly Rijard, cool. I, I hate that he just popped in for a little bit and then he's gone and then we're not gonna see him for ages. Like, oh. He displayed consideration for the way she felt and that was something. Although, I feel like in the next good content there'll be more because, we'll see, uh, Rudy and Norn talk about writing a book about Rijard's adventures, so. Not many did around her. Even Rijard spent lots of time complimenting Rudy, though, and to see such a stoic man smile at the mention of a name she despised so dearly, well, that's when hate started to turn to fear. To hear Rudy was this powerful magician worthy of respect only amplified the vision of violence that she knew for him. It made her terrified at all the things that he might do to her, and there was always this looming fear that she might get hit the same way her dad was. Fast forward to when she finally met Rudius again, and to see him prioritizing his happiness when Paul's out risking his life only fueled the flames surrounding her hate for him. She's so full she of couldn't hate. bring herself to say anything. If this was Star Wars, she'd be Anakin Skywalker. About <laughs> Though, since if she did, she believed that Rudy might hit her. She wasn't even sure Rurijert would step in if he did, and it was that feeling that no one would protect her that began the cycle of loneliness which would consume her. To her, there wasn't a single person that was on her side anymore. So, the best she could do to avoid the hate, the judgement, and the feelings of inadequacy was to stay out of the way and avoid everyone. At least that way, no one would be able to tell her just how inferior she was. Eventually, she would be told to apply for university, and the fight which would come at the peak of this conversation would end in tears not because of Aisha, but because of Rudy. Hearing him speak in such a stern voice triggered the innate fear that Norn had built up for him. She truly believed that Rudy was going to hit her here. Now, even though he didn't actually do so this time, Norn could never- mad, because we know Rudy. We, we as the audience know he would never, he would never do that. Never, but she's just so misunderstood so many things. Like, oh. For be certain that Rudy wouldn't do so next time. She wondered if this was the fear that she would constantly have to live with now. That's when the topic of dorms came up, and just like that, a solution to everything yes, had appeared. Okay, please, let me get you out see, here. <laughs> if she moved to the dorms, then she wouldn't have to see Aisha or Rudy anymore. She wouldn't be compared to anyone who was better, and she could just be herself and live her own life. It was the perfect solution to everything, yet when Rudy accepted it, we know that it made her feel sad a bit. Even so, her new life in the dorms was actually quite exciting. 
She gained a new roommate who was genuinely kind to her, and oh. though her and the other Didn't beast that, folk yeah. were what her grandma would describe as demons, Richard had been able to teach Norn otherwise. It was because of that that she was actually able to become friendly with Marissa. Class was drastically different from how it was in Millis because rather than have numerous courses solely dedicated to religion, everything in Renoa was focused on magic. Coming in halfway made picking things up rather difficult too, so it was only natural that Norn would struggle a bit. In fact, Marissa had actually had to step in and tutor her for a while. This helped her to learn some of the basics that she missed, and that made the whole study process a bit less discouraging. I mean, there were plenty of times where Norn hated herself for being so stupid, even more so when her intelligence directly influenced whether she would have to live with Rudy or not. Then, it was over time that Norn would start to hear more about Rudy, and it was the contradicting way in which everyone spoke of him that led to her breakdown and eventual isolation. The initial opinion was that everyone was afraid of him since he was, after all, the leader of the Demonic Six, a group of thugs who went around doing whatever they wanted. Yeah, which is again a shame that it's cut out of the, uh, the anime, like, but never mind. Rumor had it that two of them were collecting panties on his direct orders, so to hear Rudy was doing that while Paul was risking his life once again led Norn's opinion of him to sink even lower. It wasn't fair that he got to fool around doing whatever he wanted here. What went to make things even worse was that despite all the peculiar things Norn heard Rudy did at school, his reputation was still mostly positive amongst everyone. He never did anything to hurt or harass anyone, and whenever he did see someone getting picked on, he would always step in and make them stop. Combine this with the non-stop praise for his exceptional magic, as well as the amazing tutoring skills he displays with Julie and the conflicting portrayal of the Rudy she knew and the one everyone else did, eventually bubbled up to the breaking point we see here. She hated Rudy and thought he was a terrible person, but the hard truth to swallow was that she would never be able to compete with him. So, with everyone telling her to be more like him, a whole blanket of confusion and inadequacy began to envelop her again. Yeah, that was like the only moment that roommate had, wasn't it? Like, in the episode. Eventually leading to the point where she just couldn't take it anymore. It was as all these emotions finally got the better of her that that's when we get to the point where she's unable to leave her bed anymore. Her realization about Rudy was mostly the same after, but there was an extra bit where she looked at things from his perspective. As she considered what it was like to struggle the way that Rudy did, she realized she too probably would have punched Paul for his demeaning comments as well. So it was as she slowly came to see her and Rudy weren't so different that she also came to understand she should try to make amends with give him. It Unfortunately, yeah, it chance. didn't matter how much she wanted to though, since at this point her body simply wouldn't move anymore. She knew what she had to do and she wanted to actually do it, but some part of her just wouldn't let her. That's when she would notice Rudy was already there, and while Paul and Richard would have been by her side comforting her, Rudy kept his distance watching silently. It was when he spoke with the utmost hesitation that Norn finally realized it was Rudy who was scared oh. of her. She saw now that he was afraid of her rejecting him. The instant she understood that this was what Rudy was feeling was the same instant all her negative emotions dissipated. She no longer hated him or found him scary because what she saw in Rudy was the exact same thing she saw in Paul. It was a compassionate anxiety that was all too similar. This was only possible due to Norn's extreme sensitivity and empathy, which in turn makes her very in touch with her own emotions. It's the reason she's able to understand so quickly how Rudy is feeling and in turn sort through her own emotions herself. That would be it for Norn's side of things, which brings us now to how Rudy perceived it all. To him, what Norn did was a truly impressive accomplishment. She processed her emotions all by herself, then overcame whatever obstacles that were blocking her. To Paul and Aisha, she may just be this average kid, but to Rudy, his opinion of her was vastly different now. She'd displayed a feat of strength that Rudy's past self could never accomplish, and to be on the other end of it allowed him to understand his own problems from a different perspective. So with this and Nanahoshi's breakdown allowing him to confront his own inner demons, you could say that there's two less weights holding Rudy down now. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this oh, amazing cool. episode. As far as Season 2 goes, I gotta say that this was my favorite episode so far. The emotions portrayed and the parallels displayed with Rudy had me feeling things I haven't felt since the episode back with Paul. Plus, with a turning point literally coming in the next episode, ah. I'm pretty sure things are only gonna get better from here. 
Now, if you liked what you saw and want to see more, then consider leaving a like and subscribing. But anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So, so until next time, ciao. ciao! Cool. Nice to see the extras. We get more of an understanding of Norm's feelings and why she is the way she is. And yeah, I'm sure Tensei, I'm absolutely loving it. And these just add to the episodes. I'm intrigued to see what the changes are for the Turning Point episode. And uh, we will check that out when it's out. Thanks to my patrons. If you want to have your name at the end of every video and want to be able to watch patron-only reactions, such as the original Dragon Ball series, links in the description to the Patreon page. One dollar a month is all I ask to help support the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you for that. Thank you all. Hello, What do you guys think of that? Think of this. Click like, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave comments down below. Let me know what I should watch or discuss in future videos. And I'll see you guys. All you guys. Thanks down.